Hello everyone, I'm Animus J and welcome back to another Minecraft video. Today we are in Build World and we are going to be going over how to build the beautiful and amazing custom mushroom that you see behind me. And yeah, also the little one too, but mainly the big one. Okay, so the materials that you're going to be needing is you're going to need whichever type of mushroom block that you're going to be building with. I'm going to use only red ones. Obviously, you can use red or brown, whichever ones that you want. I just like the red ones a whole lot better than the brown ones. You're going to need the mushroom stems, which, by the way, in order to collect these, if you didn't know, is you need to use a silk touch on a giant mushroom. And you can use a silk touch axe is what's best and fastest for those. You're going to probably want some quartz stairs and some quartz slabs if you're going to be building the larger ones and then end rods for the smaller ones and then sea lanterns if you want to make it look a little bit fancy. So the smaller ones are actually super easy and this is actually not my own design but a design from Good Times with Scar on the Hermitcraft server and what you simply want to do is stack up two end rods. You're going to put one of your mushroom blocks on top and then and on each side of it, you're going to add one as well. Let me get rid of that. And then there you go. That kind of gives you a nice little tiny mushroom. So it's looking, looks pretty good, but that's obviously pretty simple to do and probably not what you came here for. So let's see, where do we want to build the big one? I'm thinking probably right here is going to be a good location. And then you gotta choose which way do you want your mushroom to lean. If you think about a mushroom, if you Google some pictures of mushrooms, which I highly encourage you to do, most of the time they don't come just straight up and then flower out. Most of the time what they do is they actually kind of lean to one side and then the, the flowery part kind of arcs off from the weight of it. So what I want is I want for mine to come off to this direction. Now you need to look at how much do I really want it to lean? Do I want it to be a severe lean? Do I want it to be a gradual lean? And the way that you're going to do that is you can see right here, I've got one, I'm coming over and then I'm going up by two, up by two, I guess technically this is up by three, up by two, up by two. Okay, so that's a semi-gradual lean. The way you can get a slower lean, you can come up by two, two over one up by kind of three over one up one sort of like that if you want a really really heavy lean what you can do is you can kind of come over by more than one now if it's looking really awkward like this one sort of is what you do is you break out the diagonals and what that does is it lessens the kind of awkwardness of it and you can do that here if you want but when you're going up like that it doesn't look as well and so what you can do is you can add the quartz stairs you can add the quartz slabs and that kind of takes the graduation off of it and allows it to not look so blocky and you can also add it underneath and so now what I don't like about it is that it's too thick so then you can break it out and do it like so if I get down here okay so you can see how it's kind of making it a little bit more like an actual stem might look and you just want to play with it until you get a shape that you like. I'm going to get rid of these. So the other thing that you need to think about is how big do I want the stem of my mushroom to be? Because if it's going to be a giant mushroom, you may want it to be significantly larger. For example, with the one that I built on JK World, my private world with the Android Miner, I have a mushroom that has quite a large stem, much like like this one is right here and so you can see that what I'm doing is I'm actually giving a whole lot more dimension to my stem and allowing it to look a whole lot thicker getting rid of some of the awkwardness from it so then if you look here we kind of have a stem that's strong at the bottom and I can even add this right here to make it look a little bit better and then it's leaning really heavily now the way that this top one is it kind of looks like it's then going straight up and I don't want that what I want is for it to come off into this kind of a direction so maybe if we do like 
that. That might look a little bit better. It's going to be a little bit harder to see. And the question actually is, is this the height that I want? And I think I do actually want it to be just a little bit taller. And that's, that's looking pretty good. I really like the shape that I've got going on there. You can see that I have the sides built up to give it just a little bit more girth, so to speak. And it's so it has a solid foundation to it. It's going up at a nice consistent curve. You can see that we have a stem right here that you can tell it looks like it's got roots in the ground that are firmly holding this section and then it just slowly leans over in this direction. Now some of the places that you can add your quartz stairs and slabs obviously you can place them on top of blocks. One of the things that you want to avoid is making a super sharp diagonal just like that. You can see we just removed the entire curve that we created simply by doing that. So what you can do is just add it in a couple of places and then add uh, the slabs as well and what that will do is that will either take away from or add to your curve. So if I add the stairs and slabs lower towards the bottom, you can see what it's doing is it's helping to make the curve go even more in that direction. Whereas if I add them on the bottom of my mushroom stem, what it's doing is it's taking away from the curve and making it curve more so upwards. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a couple here and there in order to give it a little bit more of a texture. I'm going to take away this one actually because I don't really like the way that that's looking. And I wanna make sure that all my slabs are not in the same place. So I'm gonna add a couple down here and then I'm gonna put a few on the bottom as well in order to give us just a little bit better of a base. Now then you're gonna want to grab some kind of temporary block most likely unless you just have tons and tons of mushroom blocks that you can waste and throw away. I suggest using something like dirt in order to do this next part. But what you're going to do is you are going to build out the general shape that you want the hood of your mushroom to take on. So mine, for example, is going to be higher on this end and then it's going to be lower on the other end. Now it is going to droop very heavily on the other side on the back end over here, but you have to figure that it is still going to droop a bit on this side as well. So I'm not gonna be super precise right now, but I do want to get it at least relatively close. And if it's not taking on the shape that you want, one thing that you can always do is either add blocks underneath add them above or you can get rid of them and create diagonals for example I like the way that this looks a whole lot much better than it did with either of the blocks on the corners like so then what I'm going to do is keeping in mind that the stem right here should be the thickest part of our mushroom so I'm gonna build that out just a little bit like so as a reminder that this that this right here is the thick part and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to build it down and build the latter half of our mushroom very low and droopy. So overall, I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to do the same thing coming out from the sides. Now what you need to do is keep in mind that these sides need to connect both from the bottom up to the top. So if I just build them to a random location, it might make my mushroom look very awkward. It's gonna to have to come from here all the way around to here and then all the way up to here. But we want it to have a smooth shape because it's going to essentially be a, a circle that goes from here all the way around and then back up to here again. So we wanna keep that in mind. And we're not gonna be able to get that exact on the first try, but once we start putting in a lot more of the blocks, it's gonna be easier to see exactly how that is going to take place. So then the next step, once you have all four of your axes filled in, what you're gonna wanna do is connect them up. So I'm gonna start right here and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slowly work my way down, understanding that it's not gonna be perfect by any means until I get to each of the sides. 
Once you've connected that up, you can start to make it a little bit better by adding or taking away blocks wherever you want. But keep in mind that these are not sharp points. They should look rounded. So you want to have it slowly coming out, slowly rounding itself off, and also slowly coming down to the point. So you can see right here, I've actually done kind of a good job, but I think we need to round it off a little bit more, which means we need to come out a bit more. And I think it needs to come out here in the front a little bit more as well. Now you can see on this side I've kind of messed it up because it looks like it comes down and then it's just perfectly around and we don't want that. We want it to have continuity from the front all the way to the back. So I'm going to get rid of a lot of this and I'm going to do a better job of making it look like this is one continuous circle that goes up to the very top of the mushroom. And there we go, that's looking a whole lot better than it was. We still have some odd shapes and odd curves going on, but that's perfectly fine as our mushroom obviously is not going to be very perfect. So then the next thing that you wanna do is you're gonna take your mushroom blocks and you're gonna kinda go around and you're gonna close in that trim. Now you can either replace the dirt blocks or you can come behind and you can add on to them. Just depends on how everything is looking for you. In some places you might wanna replace it and then in some places you might want to just build over it. Okay, so I've done the outer circle with my mushroom blocks. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come through and I'm going to just really quickly replace a lot of these blocks. It doesn't have to be exact. You just want to kind of get the, um, get the, the mushroom blocks in there so you have an idea of where your, your guidelines basically are going to be at. And now one thing, notice how high this peak is. That's going to look really weird considering that the stem should be the strongest part of the mushroom. So what I need to do actually is I need to build this up a whole lot more. And then what it needs to do is it needs to gradually decline once we start getting to this part of the mushroom because this is actually just kind of the edge of the stem. And then that looks a whole lot better already. And then we'll carry that on down here. Now, the next step is to fill in the circle all around. That's gonna be the top. And the way that you wanna do that is you wanna kinda start at the bottom and you wanna start filling it in level by level. And the reason you're starting at the bottom is so you don't end up with any walls like this right here. I don't want it to be that steep. And if you look right here, we have a very steep wall and that doesn't look very good. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to smooth that out by taking that down by a layer right there. And so what we're doing is we're making it so that we're slowly curving our mushroom up and if we started at the top it's hard to gauge the curve of the mushroom because you have to get down to the bottom whereas if you start at the bottom what you can do is you can always just add new mushroom blocks over top of the old ones and so you can see we have a pretty decent curve going on right there so then what we're going to do is we're going to carry that curve onto this side now i have a really sharp point right here that doesn't look very good so then what i'm going to do is i'm going to smooth that out a bit adding a whole bunch of blocks over it. I'm gonna take that one away. And there we have it, minus a couple of dirt blocks that are still showing through. We've got a pretty decent looking mushroom. So I'm just taking a step back from all the sides and looking at it and trying to see if there's any areas that I don't really like how they're looking, if they're taking away from the curve too much, if they're too lumpy or anything like that. Go around the underside and just get rid of a lot of the dirt, most of the dirt, if not all of the dirt. There doesn't have to be all of it gone because there's going to be some spots that won't even be visible. If I pop a sea lantern down right here just so that you can see a little bit better. There's places like this right here that I'm actually just going to cover up with some mushrooms. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to thicken up the inside of our mushroom because what I want to do is give it the brown underside, but we want to make sure that it's not just a super thin mushroom, that it's an umbrella only, because 
if you look at it, that looks a little bit weird. It looks more like an upside down cup. So starting at the stem, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slowly build out from the stem towards the outside, gradually increasing the shape of it until it matches up with the outside of the cup. And so I'm gonna bring this out. We're gonna slowly come down like this. Now, if you make any mistakes under here, for instance, that one right there, I'm not worried about replacing that block because now that's giving me the brown underside that I actually want. And that's gonna be the next step, is that once you have the general shape on the underside that you want, the next thing that you're gonna do is you're going to come behind it and you're going to place extra blocks and then just break them in order to expose that brown underside. Now I'm going to leave the lip of my mushroom mostly as red, just so that it has that nice mushroomy closed in look to it. But then as far as the rest of it goes, I'm gonna make sure to expose all of the sides from it. And once you're happy with the inside of your mushroom, what you can do to add just a little bit extra pizzazz to it is you can add some end rods here and there in order to light it up a little bit. Or what you can do is you can also add some sea lanterns. Now, sea lanterns, uh, I suppose you can do it with end rods as well, but an easy way to hide those is you can add some quartz slabs and some quartz stairs in a couple different areas in order to kind of blend the inside of your mushroom a little bit, give it a little bit of extra details that it didn't previously have without it. Kind of smooth out some of the more extreme spots and use them in order to hide whatever it is that you're using for lighting. Then of course, what natural build would be complete without a couple of hangy vines here and there? Make sure that your vines don't just come off of the edges, but make sure that they also come down on the sides as well from the top of your mushroom because we don't just have vines on the side, do we? We have them coming off the top. They grow all over the place, right? So I'm just gonna add a couple of those in a couple of places. And once those grow out by pure magic, here we go. What you can do is go through with some string and basically place the string one level below where you want your vine to end because what it's gonna do is the string is going to replace the block that you're clicking on with your string. So clearly you don't want all of your vines to reach all the way down to the ground and what's gonna happen is wherever you place the string, it's going to stop the vines from growing at that height. I didn't actually want that to be there, so let's go down by one and let's do that one there and there. There you have it, everybody. There is our very beautiful, very gigantic custom mushroom. I hope that you enjoyed that tutorial. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. If you haven't already, I would love to have you subscribe. If you run into any issues, feel free to join our Discord. Ask any questions for this, for Redstone, for any of the other things that you might come across. That's it for today, though, guys. I'm Animus J, and I'll see you in the next video.